Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we celebrate all the things we do while seated. I'm your host, E, and today I'm talking to Mr. Doyle of a great undertaking. How you doing tonight, Mr. Doyle? Hey, I'm doing well, E. Thanks for having me on your channel. This is really cool. Definitely. The main point of this video is I want to bring as many of my people to your channel as humanly possible. I'm a massive fan of your content. I've been binging your videos ever since Brad Perkins, you know, put me on to you. And I, I got to say, mad respect for the for the production quality, first off. Second off, you know, taking the time to write the scripts because um, I don't even write scripts. I do. <laughs> I just I, I wing it um, and then I'll go back and I'll edit the video. Well, nowadays, back in the day, I used to just ramble um, right off the bat. I want to ask you, why did you pick? king what 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 does king mean to you why was that the author that that you had to latch on to for this one all right well um so initially uh it was because i i had found an old copy of the shining in my parents basement and um my wife was doing a a test one day and i had to stay out in the car for about and i so this is you know well over a decade ago now and um i opened up that book and i was so enthralled by it um and it was kind of what brought me back to like being an active reader uh, you know that was something i had done pretty uh regularly throughout my life and then sometime in my mid-20s i just kind of you know i got really into making music i wanted to be in a band and like every free moment i had i was playing guitar um, and so picking up that book really rekindled that need to read. And before I knew it, I was just reading every book in the bibliography in chronological order because I couldn't stop. It was like a voracious, I have to do this kind of thing. Um, and so within a year I had bought all of the books and then had them in order on my shelf of, you know, reading order of course at yes <laughs> i know i'm not alone in this i know the compulsion my friend i know the um, compulsion but you know essentially uh it, it when i it came time to make the channel it was you know covid shutdown had happened uh i was uh, not working for the first time since i was like 14 years old um child labor woo um and <laughs> and um uh it was one of those things where believe it or not until 2020 i hadn't really ever spent any time watching youtube and then really? yeah i was always a music guy and then i got into books and um it took me a long time to even get a smartphone you know when all of my friends had one i still didn't and so eventually you know i would get into social media and then it took me a while longer to get into streaming music which you know still maybe not the greatest thing to do but no yeah uh no, but we, we all do it we all yeah do it. yeah yeah we're all guilty so, so you have something in common with king because he refused for the longest time to uh to, to buy a cell phone uh there's the there's the infamous uh biography at the end or well, in the the dust jacket of cell that says he lives in maine with his wife writer tabitha king and he does not own a cell phone yes um and now he's on twitter constantly i know it's hilarious <laughs> hilarious to me but anyways can continue no it's fine uh, yeah king is uh somewhat terminally online these days but uh i do enjoy that you know he is always giving someone a good rousing uh i've always enjoyed the fact that he just kind of is like this is what i feel about a thing and i know it's going to be controversial and people are going to be mad at me but i'm going to say it anyway and uh, i i respect that about the man um but yeah in terms of the youtube channel i was like okay everything's shut down what am I doing with myself? How can I keep busy? I'll start a YouTube channel. What do I know a lot about? Stephen King was pretty much the only thing. I was like, well, there's, I, I can play guitar, but I'm not really that great at it. I can, you know, uh, the, it, I, I like motorcycles, but I'm not super, I'm not smart enough to fix them by myself, you know? So, so no uh, mechanics, no music. That's right. It just narrowed itself down really quickly. And, you know, there's lots of information. If you don't know a thing, you can just go and find the information. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, Stephen King kind of happened by default because it was the thing I, it was that one obsession I'd had for a long time that I was like, all right, I probably have something to say about all of these things. Now to build off of that, are you, do you reread these books or are you reading them now as you're doing the series as well and as you're doing your videos do you reread them before you do the video or is it all online research unless you don't want to tell your secrets that's no no that's that absolutely i i do i reread every single one before i make the video nice. um because uh, i have found that uh, at the rate that i was reading them initially um i didn't retain a lot or, you know, there's so many, oh, there's a little hair floating through the air. Uh, you anyway. see the bug flying around. So if you see me go like this, it has nothing to do with, you don't stink or anything. I just got a bug flying around here. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh, geez, what was I saying? I'm sorry. I, I digress. <laughs> I, I do the same thing, so I apologize. Um, no, I, were, I shouldn't have saying... tried to grab, I shouldn't have tried to grab the hair. <laughs> Everything would have been fine if I hadn't squirreled out on that hair floating through the air. That's it. Show's over. Get out of uh, here. No, I'm kidding. I... Um, but it, <laughs> it was, we were talking about the, I believe we were talking about the shooting of each video and rereading each one. Oh, right. Uh, before every single video yes uh, anyway so if you if you recall what you want to say from there that's i do fine. Okay, i do thank you uh mm -hmm. yes so i i do technically i'm not rereading anymore i'm i'm audio booking these days because i have found uh i either don't have time to sit down and read a book for any length of time or i will like pass out within five minutes of sitting down and trying to read a book i guess i'm 41 now so like my body's just like <laughs> as soon as i get comfortable especially if it's like after dinner on a you know a nice quiet evening yeah. um but yeah i found audiobooks uh to be very helpful um i take a lot of notes as i'm listening little phrases that catch my attention um but you know this time around i'm listening with a more uh, like I'm looking for something below the surface that I can latch on to and make a video about. Um, and that's mainly just because I, uh, you know, I, I found that I, when I started, I was doing more of a, let's talk about each character in the book. Let's talk about the plot kind of, you know, standard booktuber stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that kind of got boring for me after a little while. And it was like, the weirder stuff like what if carrie was actually a super villain and that was her origin story and she grew into this nightmare phoenix creature and uh you know the, just to theorize about that sort of stuff was way more fun than just recapping and revisiting what the book was about so yeah i just found myself wanting to say all right what is in here that i can pull out right. that maybe nobody else has really talked about yet well, you do you do an absolutely fantastic job. Um, Thank you. The, uh, I was we were talking. We've been talking uh, for those of you in chat and we will get to questions here in a little bit, Brad. I want to get some other stuff out. Um, but uh, this is one of the things that I'm most impressed with. Uh, and we were talking beforehand. And I just want to reiterate this. Looking the very first video I watched of yours was it. Um, and I was taken aback by having read it. 18 times up until this point and having never caught the theme of childhood trauma um that that blows my mind that you know that that completely escaped me but there's something else that you said in the video and i don't want to get you know political but you 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 made an allegory for uh extremist mindsets and the resurfacing or the surfacing of those mindsets being akin to pennywise you know his hibernation cycle and everything and how you know he, he comes out back into the world i thought that was absolutely brilliant i really don't have a question about that i just want to let you know how fucking smart i think you are <laughs> um because i I, I get quite I get quite a bit when I, when I'm reading these books and I, I love literary fiction so I read deeply, but that was the one thing that I missed that it was about the resurfacing you know of, of childhood trauma and having to go back and bury that, um, and it makes so much it makes so much more sense. In fact, you you were the one I mentioned uh, in another video that I was going to go back and read it for the nineteenth time, and you're one of the reasons why I want to go back and read it for the nineteenth time because I am once again going to fi hopefully find something new when I read it, um, which brings me to the, I love circular narratives, which brings me 
to the next question, which is your favorite Stephen King book. Do you have one? And if so, why? God, this question always stresses me out because you always feel like you're going to say an answer and immediately be like, but no, actually, it's, it's, it's this one. Uh, so I, I have kind of a, I have my knee jerk response and then I have kind of the the one that if I think about it a little longer, uh, I, I'll, I'll go, okay, no, maybe it's that one. And then I also have the, well, if it weren't for that one, then I wouldn't have read any of these. Sure, so, tell me all of them. I don't so care. I, I got to give you all time. three. Yeah, I got to give you it, all three. Give me, give me. They okay. want to hear too. Go. All right. So my knee jerk favorite is for whatever reason, I can't fully understand myself under the dome. Um, I, I know it's kind of okay. an unusual pick, but no, fair. It, it was, uh, and it's something I've talked about in some of my recent videos is King's ability to create the microcosm and with that particular cast of characters, um, you know, he creates this, there's a, so, a social message going on there um, and a lot more than just that. And for whatever reason, the Rennies, uh, Big Jim and his son were like captivating characters for me, Rennie uh, Sr. in that he had that, uh, you know, politician mm -hmm. angle to him and that veneer of who he pretended to be versus right. who he really was. And then Junior, who was just kind of an unbridled maniac from the start, like the yep. first scene he is in before he even knows the dome has come down. Uh, <laughs> and so, it. yeah, I don't know. Uh, so that's the knee jerk response. The one where I think about it more deeply is Cujo. Um, and for that one, it was this, um, and I talked about it in my video for Cujo, um, there's a, this intimate relationship you come to develop with these characters who are also very desperate in their own special ways to escape a, a loveless, abusive marriage, uh, you know, to just get out of that small town. There's this, uh, I can't even remember the name of it now. It was a phobia of being trapped. And everybody in that book has this way that they are trapped in their own unique way. Even, and, even Cujo. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He was mm -hmm. a good boy. That was a good dog. Yep. That was not his fault. Nope. Um, justice for Cujo. Justice um, for Cujo, damn it. <laughs> and, damn uh, and that has, I would say, two, like from what I've read, uh, like my rereads for the channel from Carrie all the way up until Needful Things, the ending to Cujo is easily the most devastating, gut-wrenching ending to any of those books uh, for me personally. Um, and then, um, the, the third pick, uh, is the shining and, you know, there's lots of obvious reasons for that. And honestly, I wish I could go back and, and remake, and I might still, uh, remake my videos for some of those earlier King publications. Hey, I'm the, doing it now. I don't blame you. Right. The Redux series. I've been yes, watching exactly. them. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Thank funny, you. appreciate it. <laughs> it's really funny. I realized today that I am subscribed to you on a different YouTube account. I've been watching you from my band account this whole time. So if yeah, you I don't, notice... I don't pay attention anyway. So I, I never I, I never would have noticed because I don't watch my that that's not something I look at. So I never got gotcha. you told on yourself. I, well no, I wanted kidding. to be I'm honest kidding. in case I was caught here. But no, uh no. well because I told you I watched I when you commented it was like oh my God I watch your videos all the time. And then uh, I was like all right he's gonna see that I just subscribed today and be like that son of a bitch he never watched any of my videos. Um I've done but the anyway, same, I've, done, I've done the same thing on Twitter on uh, on here. It's like I I could have swore I would subscribe to you, <laughs> and like I told you at the beginning, I have many different names. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, it, yeah, it happens. I understand. Anyways, can you were talking about the the, the shining? Yeah, so the shining for me is it's the one that, like I said earlier, rekindled that desire to read and was like my first time of really being like fully absorbed in a book in my adulthood to the point where I was like. I am super into this, whereas, you know, for the previous decade, all I wanted to do was party and play rock and roll music and be a degenerate. So <laughs> I, in all honesty, like it turned me into a bit of a bookworm, which, you know, I think made me a better dad, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't have the desire to go out and to be a wild man anymore. I wanted to stay home and quietly read books and spend time with my family. My so. Guy. 
Yep. Pow. <laughs> so those are the three, uh, Under the Dome, Cujo, and The Shining, because I just cannot seem to narrow it down to one. Okay. Um, that all, all valid. I have my... I have my own opinions of those books, and some of them are not good, but we're not going to talk about that. I'm gonna, let's, I'm gonna uh, let let's do a separate stream for each one of those books and talk about let's, those books let's, specifically. Let's, yeah, let, let, let's do that. And then awesome. I can I can mention my own favorites, and then we can just go back and forth on that. Please, yeah. Um, so I want to touch on something you are a father, you said, up to, and I know from the beginning of the video, uh, well, not beginning of the video. Like I said, we've been talking for 30 minutes before we even went live. So um, you have a younger kid and you have an older kid. Um, well, of course, but, you know, they, they, they got some years. But do either one of them, what I'm getting at is, do either one of them read King yet? That's a negative. Um, I, th I think my daughter um, will eventually get there. She's too young, I think, to, mm -hmm. to... And I found out the hard way that if you try to offer it to them and say hey check this out it's really cool you're gonna love it they're gonna mm -hmm. go nah absolutely right yeah so i tried doing that with musical instruments earlier on and uh you know the guitar and the drums have just collected dust since then mm -hmm. that i got for my son for his birthday so i've just i left it alone um you know they come down here into my uh secret top secret man layer in the basement on occasion. And, and we'll look at my books and I can see there's some curiosity yeah. there. Uh, but I'm hoping that my daughter will be interested in cycle of the werewolf eventually here yeah. because she, she's just getting into um, anime and um, Oh my gosh, I am going to completely make a fool of myself. I can't even think of the style of, of the graphic novels that she's into now there. Uh, Manga. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, you're there welcome. It is. <laughs> I, I thought that at, at first I thought you said it. I guess it was my own brain filling in the blanks because I heard anime and instantly thought manga. So I didn't want to, uh, be, you know, repeat what you had already said. But anyways, that's how my brain works. No, nope, okay. that's great. No, nope, you did it, not. In fact, hear me say it. You heard me okay. trying really hard to think it. I read your mind. Got some. Not Carrie. Who? Who? Who would be? <laughs> whatever. Anyways. Um, but. Uh, so with with my kids, uh, I I found the same thing out very early also, um, and it was with once again we have a lot in common by the way. And if you didn't catch my reaction to you saying you're 41 years old, I'm 42, so we're about the same age also. Um, with my oldest, I uh, I gave them a, a guitar and was like, do what you want with it. You know, um, I'd I'd like to play with you sometime if you get into it. Nothing happened. Uh, years went by, almost a decade, and now they play all the time. But uh, I just happened to, we were riding down the road one day, and this is when they were the oldest one was, uh, I think, uh, 15 or 16. And they just happened to say, by the way, I listened to Carrie. And I'm like, you did? Like, they, they know, of course, I mean, I'm a fanboy at home, just like I'm a fanboy on the channel, right? So uh, I was like, oh, you did? And then we started talking more and we even did two episodes of a podcast where uh, we, it was uh, Dan and Dan and E uh, <laughs> anyways, but uh, we did the, we did Carrie and then we did one that was a combined the shining and uh, Dr. Sleep to say that I was proud would be the understatement of the century to, to get to know that they had caught all the themes and they had their own opinions and even that they they were cool to disagree with me about certain things was just absolutely fantastic for me um and most recently we were on a, our way to georgia which is about three hour um drive and I, I needed to finish fairy tale for the channel um because people were chomping at the bit to to get it done and uh my youngest uh my son he he goes what is this? I was listening to the audiobook in the car um, and I thought he was asleep. But he goes, what is this? It sounds really cool. And I don't know if you've gotten to fairy tale yet. I'm, I'm trying. You have. OK, good. Um, but not I'm still trying not to spoil anything. But we got to a big action sequence in the in, in Empress, in the uh, the very first big action sequence um, with the what, <laughs> what is it? The not. 
the, the blue guys, I guess is the best way to put it. And uh, that's when he started paying attention. So he went back and uh, he, he started listening to it on Scribd uh, by, by himself after I gave him the approval after listening to the entire thing um, that, you know, he, he could watch it. And he was uh, he was 10 at the time. And now he's asking me, you know, what what else can can I read? Unfortunately, at this point in time, I'm like uh, Eyes of the Dragon. And fairy tale. <laughs> that's, 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 that's about all we got right now. Sorry, um, kid. Which uh, brings me to what I want to talk about next, which oh, we are far enough into the video uh, to bring this up. And that is Stephen King's awkward ass sex scenes and sexual content. I have I have the same opinion you do. Um, and the what I, what I want to ask you. And what do you think other than that scene in it? Because I, I don't I don't even like talking about that one. Um, what is the worst? Worst one you can think of, because for me, it's Salem's Lot. Um, the the Susan uh, and what is it? Ben Ben Mears or is that the kid? I can't I can't remember right off the top of my head. But um, that was what is he? They say something like "Love me," and he loved her. You know, it's <laughs> it's so it's so weird and awkward. But I I, I want to even if it is weird and awkward, I want to know what what you think is probably the most heinous offense he has committed, other than that scene. Okay, so outside of that scene um i i have a particular beef with the sex scene from the mist um so and i've talked about this and i did an entire video about how the dude in the mist is a horny weirdo um <laughs> he's trapped in the grocery store his son is there with him he meets the girl amanda dumfries for the first time and he thinks wow she's kind of hot and while watching her sleep because some of her midriff is exposed he gets a hard on mm. and i'm like what dude what? you're in the midst of the uh, the apocalypse your wife is probably dead you just witnessed two you've just found two guys dead in the cooler who'd hung themselves and then they go have sex and i'm just like <laughs> that would not happen i'm so sorry mr king not in a million years would anyone who just lived through what this man lived through be like, that would be a good time for some fucking. <laughs> no, no. I thought for sure. I thought for sure you were going to say the wastelands because that was one of the oh, funniest, the God. funniest, <laughs> qu like quotes I can think of. It's just like <laughs> a dead, dead, a dead, a Susanna hate fucking a demon. <laughs> Yo, that video has done worse than any video I've posted in a long time. And I'm convinced what? it's because I, and I bleeped it every time yeah. I said it, but no, that video performed worse than anything I've put wow. out. Like of my last 10 videos, that is number 10. They, they might have, well, what YouTube might've done is they might've suppressed it because you do talk about, you know, you, you do say sex and you know, yeah, that yeah. stuff. So YouTube might have suppressed it. I don't know. But also, I bump into this a lot where people don't like the wastelands. Um, so it's not something that they're actively looking for. That's true. That's um, true. Everyone, every, damn near everyone I, I know uh, drools all over the drawing of the three. Um, and of course, I mean, you have the epic uh, St. What is it, Balthazar, whatever it is, the epic, the epic gunfight um in the, the oh yeah with yeah. the gangsters I, exactly yeah, then you yeah, have yeah. everything everything with Dedo, Dedo, susanna that's so confusing every time but anyways <laughs> um but you know you with, with the wastelands i hear that one was you know just too batshit for for people which i kind of get but that's the king that i like that, that's the king that i covet is regulators it you know whether you got to shape-shifting fucking clown i mean come on man oh, yeah. a, it's it's amazing um but i i really like his weird stuff and having a uh sentient psychopathic fucking monorail train is top tier for me i love blaine and ever since i was a kid i've been listening to people complain about blaine the monorail blaine the pain and I, I, I love that thing. I, it's, 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 and even though it was a cliffhanger, we had to wait. We literally had to wait years 
for for the next one only to get i'm not a fan of wizard and glass i'm going to say this now um but only to get wizard and glass up next and the journey not move forward and then how long it was between wizard and glass and wolves of the kala uh, anyways but you see now i didn't experience that in real time because all those books had already come out by the time i was uh, a king simp right. all of a sudden <laughs> so but i will yo for lucky. real though like going from the wastelands to wizard and glass and all of a sudden like realizing oh we're not resolving this in this book uh i don't know if you were a big fan of the walking dead when they initially came out yes but they the would do they would do some stuff like that on occasion where they'd be like cliffhanger new episode next week here we go oh we're just going to do a, the backstory of that one guy yep unfortunately and i didn't like that either um no, i, I no. hated that uh breaking bad did that once or twice too and that aggravated the the piss out of me yeah um but with uh with with King, it, I think I think it's easier, especially from a reader or viewer standpoint. It's easier to get away with that with a television show than yeah. it is for a book, especially when you don't plan on writing the next book right after it. Yeah. And that, that's I think that's where you know some of the, uh, the the vitriol comes from when when people think about that space and time. Um, but w with me, the way I look at that series is you have. Uh, the Gunslinger is the prologue. It's just a 300-page prologue. That's all it is. Um, any other author who had done that, it would have been the first 20, 30 pages of, you know, the drawing of the three. Yeah. Um, even it, it would probably would have started with the Battle of Tull and then jumped right into the drawing of the three. Literally any other author. I believe that with my whole chest. And then the second book is Character Introductions for who you're going to be traveling with the rest of the journey, which is a wild fucking thing to do to write an entire book of just character introductions. Yeah, and the reason, so. the reason why I love the wastelands is because that's when the journey starts going. That's when we have everybody on board. We get Jake through the weirdest fucking possible way, but we <laughs> everybody's together. Everybody. She's hate fucking a semen demon. And then we say, <laughs> we say, we save Jake and we're moving on. <laughs> um, and then Wizard of the Glass, bam, you hit a wall. And all of a sudden, this mystery man that has so much, so it's such a secretive person. We now know his damn near entire life story. And I, I hate that um, because, in fact, I rank Wizard and Glass among the top five worst Stephen King books for that reason, because he killed the mystery for me. Yeah. I, I no longer felt like, uh this this was you know not a nameless or faceless stranger but this stranger was now too human for me i know that sounds bad but it it was he was like a superhero up until that point sure. and then we find out that the only thing the the only the only reason he's like this is because his girl got killed or burned whatever. at the stake if i remember correctly yeah, yeah. But it's been a um, while yeah no it's it's 100 percent that um but uh it and and then and then he ends the book uh, spoilers by the way guys if you didn't know we're, we're, we're doing spoilers spoilers here um, we go if you're a fan of the channel you know i do spoilers anyway so anyways um and then we end up at the fucking emerald city from the wizard of oz and we have to wait for more <laughs> until 2003 when he decides to restart it because he almost died in a fucking van act well in an accident you know all about the accident oh yeah. oh yeah um i've watched your videos i'm a fan if i haven't already said that <laughs> anyway, you have thank you um yeah uh and i i think that's that's one of the the things that really bothers me about wizarding glass is that not only did we have to wait so long but it didn't go anywhere it ruined a character it didn't ruin i was back on board for wolves of the kala because Same. that's what i wanted i wanted to see them adventuring and doing shit yes um instead of you know losing eddie Susanna, and jake and oi to go back to this place that i could rio the coos who gives a fuck about rio the coos? <laughs> who, who, who gives a fuck about shimi who gives a fuck about this yeah there are plenty of people who do don't get me wrong i get it i get it but that's but that's my beef is it a good book probably um stephen king in my opinion has only really written two bad books that 
I feel he should apologize publicly for. Oh man, but, I want to, I want to uh, know, but let's save it for another conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody in chat knows what they are, but anyways, um, <laughs> so, so yeah. What, what is, what is your opinion of the Dark Tower series, and what's your favorite book in in that one, if you can name one? Yeah, sure. Um, so, as far as the Dark Tower goes, um, I have listened to it in its entirety twice, or read it, read it once in its entirety listen mm -hmm. to it once in its entirety and then when i tried to go back and this is during COVID as well because i was like well no, never a better time to listen to the dark <laughs> right. tower series okay, uh, to i got to wolves of the kala and i just i tapped out it was like right at the end of wizard and glass i was like i need i gotta take a break i gotta yeah. take a break from this so i have always been a horror thriller fan but I've never been a fantasy fan. So right. like getting through Wizard and Glass was genuinely a struggle for me. Yeah. Uh, and it is every time. Um, so it's by the time I get to Wolves of the Kala, I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just, maybe I'm just going to go read it again. Or uh, Christine, I'm a huge Christine fan. I love that freaking book. But uh, good story. I wonder how many of my favorite books are the two that you hate. <laughs> I, I don't think I, I don't think you've even mentioned them, and I don't believe you've gotten. I know you haven't gotten them into your ser in your series. Oh, okay, okay. Great, um, they great. they are relatively new, okay. um, and like I said, we'll we'll say we'll save it. But every like I said, also everybody in chat knows, uh, unless you, some of your fans are here that have never heard of me. Um, every everybody knows uh, in, on on my channel because I I'm always complaining about them. God, I'm um, so we'll, curious, but I also want to save it. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll save it. I'm I'm gonna respect <laughs> your I'm gonna respect your wishes. Did so? I'm sorry. Did you say a favorite in the in the Dark Tower yet? I I don't believe I did. Um, yeah, at one point, it was Wolves of the Kala. It's a good book. Uh, but I I don't know. It might be the Wastelands because it is just unadulterated batshit crazy every genre under the sun exactly and you know what that for me works a whole lot more than straight up fantasy realm kind of shit so yeah i guess probably the wastelands but i will say this i don't i have I have decided to refrain from forming full opinions on the things I haven't covered for the channel yet. Yeah. So yeah. anything, anything after needful things, I don't feel like I have put in enough thought and effort into fully understanding what my feelings about it are. So yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. fair enough. Um, also, once again, I am. Th this is is getting. It's not getting creepier, but I'm not a fantasy fan either. I hate fantasy i will watch the movies um i will well yeah the, i'll sci-fi and fantasy i don't care to read uh there's only two fantasy series i've even went back and tried to read lord of the rings that i loved from my childhood i couldn't get past the opening of the two towers um it just it bores me to tears everybody's doing the same fucking thing over and over and over again we talked about this a little bit beforehand um uh, with apocalyptic uh post-apocalyptic fiction um and why i don't read it but uh with fantasy there's only two series uh two fantasy well they're both series but anyways that's ken liu's the dandelion dynasty it's a retelling of Chinese mythology and history mashed all together. It's amazing. Amazing. It's nothing like anything else I've ever read. And I've tried all the big names, Robert Jordan, uh, Brandon Sanderson, uh, uh, Amber Crombie and Fitch or whatever the fuck his name is. Um, you know, <laughs> you know all, all, all those guys. I've tried, I've tried all of them. Um, and then we have Marlon James. I think it's called the Dark Star Trilogy. There's only two books out so far, but it's uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf, and Moon Witch, Spider King. Uh, both fantastic, uh, amazing series. So I'm just going to throw that out there as a recommendation. Since you don't like fantasy, if you ever want to try those two, and we can talk about it more later or whatever, um, if you yeah. need to email you those again. But um, anywho, so... We're on the same page with the Dark Tower. Um, with both of us enjoy uh, the Wastelands the most. Um, I do have one question, and I know you don't want to form an opinion, but it's literally almost a yes or no. Were you happy 
with how, and I'm going to tell you how I feel beforehand. So you don't feel you know, that, that you're put on the spot. Do you feel like the ending was a good ending? And I say it is because the entire time he has set us up for that all the way since the gunslinger, um, since the, the end of the very first book, he told us that that's how it was going to go. Does that upset you? Yes. Or did you like it? Do you have any opinions you do want to share about? It? Uh, I was I was not like offended or upset about the ending. In all honesty, for me, I had a like, oh, hey, I don't think he completely fucked up this ending. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm good. not I'm not of a mind that he does that more often than not necessarily. But you know, when you've invested that much time. Like I, I, I can see how some people might have been disappointed, but I, I, I do think, like you said, like you, you must not have seen it coming. Yeah. But, but like how? Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I did enjoy uh, the ending. I thought, you know what? There are worse ways he could have wrapped this sucker up after all this time. And the other question, you know, that I'd have for those people that didn't like it, what, what would your idea have been? Right. Yeah, what would that's... you have done? That's that's how I feel on it. Also, that's that's my question is like, how would you have wrapped up this series of seven, eight? If you want to if you want to include uh, when I, I love went through the keyhole, don't get me wrong. I like but, uh, that you know, there's there's eight books in the story. And then when you have Little Sisters of Aluria, so you can say eight point five or, or whatever. But sure. um, but yeah, how how else? It, like I said, he and, and you said he was setting us up. The entire time and as a constant reader we should know the ending it's about what is it it's about the journey not the destination right. so and for people to dismiss 8.5 but i'm just gonna go into 8.5 books or 8.25 books um to them <laughs> to dis dismiss all of it i mean we're not talking about the ending of the game of thrones tv show we're talking about you know the these the tones this this complete and finished story you know right, right. um and that it at the best pop possible example of him proving that the journey can be better than the destination is that series in in my opinion that's, um, yeah, because, that's true yeah i mean we we get the crimson king at the end it may not be what everybody wanted it may not be the battle that everybody thought was coming the only thing that he didn't follow through with um that bothered me was the what the battle for eld or the um the that epic battle that uh i think they did it in the graphics in the graphic novel um but the uh the one that you constantly hear about over and over and over again the, the death of elaine and yes. all, all that stuff yeah. we've heard so much about it i am shocked that he did not put that in that's literally my only disappointment other than Wizard and Glass. I don't like Song of Susanna either, but mm. it, it at least fits out down here. Right, right. Where where it's not a speed bump, um, and we only had to wait six months for it after Wolves, and then another six for it to end. That was fantastic. But <laughs> but uh, I I'm of the, I'm of the firm belief that the that Song of Susanna should have been at the end of Wolves or at the beginning of the Dark Tower. Um, it should have been part of that instead of that's so so awkward the opening is awkward the ending's awkward the middle is awkward because as much as i love stephen king the the meta fiction is a little much for me in that one um yeah so I can relate yeah okay i was just about to ask you what you what you felt about him placing himself in the story um Oof. if you yeah. i i mean i'll be honest with you the first time i read it i remember just being like whoa this is crazy but i was also smoking a lot of weed at the time oh so you know that might have had an effect but we have uh, even more in common but it, <laughs> I, i'm gummies but uh yeah i can't i can't handle it's the, the the smoky smoke but yeah anyway. I, I had to i had to give it up completely because i was like really? losing my mind every time my heart would pound out of my chest and i'd get paranoid and freaked out i've wow. ruined so many date nights now that i just oh. gave, gave it up completely like all right honey the kids are gone let's get crazy and then oh my god oh my god I can't even sit here and watch this stand-up special without like my heart jumping out of my freaking chest. So yeah, I just I just don't a, bother that's anymore. 
those are wonderful fucking feeling, aren't they? Because uh, what we have down here, I'm from, uh, I'm, I live, I'm not from Alabama. I'm from California, but yeah, um, I'm ended up here in Alabama. And of course, we don't even have medical yet. It's been voted into practice. And even when it does come sometime in the next year or two, um, it's only going to be one flavor gummy, no flour, nothing else. And you're, do you, do you mind saying, do you mind me saying where you're located? Not okay. So you're in New York. Um, yep. I don't know if it's city or if it's the surrounding area. Of course, when you say New York, everybody's first thought is New York city. Is it city? Upstate. Upstate. Okay. My mom's from upstate New York. Um, gotcha. It, uh, but anyways, I digress. Um, but yeah, uh, so all we have around here is the Delta 8, Delta 10, THC, O, THC. I say all we have. We have HHC. We have all these different. We have everything because of the farm bill, because it is derived from hemp, which they right. can grow legally right. here. Uh, we have all this wonderful shit, but the Delta 8 especially gives me panic attacks like no one's business. Um, and I'll just be sitting there and it's like, this is it. This is how I fucking die. Sitting here eating fucking Cheetos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's Jericho experience. Hill. Thank you, Brad. Sorry, Jer- Jericho Hill, Brad. That that's the Battle of Jericho Hill. Ah, what, that's Brad. what it is. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, um, but yeah, those those panic attacks, the uh, especially on weed, are so goddamn intense. You, you you can be breathing fine and thinking that you're not breathing. That's it's it's wild. That was that was my major issue is I would yeah. be sitting there like, oh, man, I think I'm freaking out. I feel weird. I feel <laughs> kind of terrible. sick. I feel kind of dizzy. And then be like, yeah. oh, my God, you're not breathing right now, you idiot. Freaking <laughs> breathe. You yes. know, forgetting so. forgetting to breathe is is a big one. It is. Yeah. And I was like, how do you forget to breathe? It's a bodily function. Right. It's I shouldn't autonomous. have to remind myself to do that. But yeah, that's that was when I was like, all right, you know what? I'm good. Yeah. The sad part is a dispensary is about to open up right up the street from my job. Damn. And I'm just like, I mean, I know I know it's going to happen. I'm going to go in there and be like, hey, guy, I need something that's going to be <laughs> mellow and not make me flip my freaking shit. <laughs> and it's probably it's probably going to happen anyway, but I know I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. I have to at least try. This has been a long time since I enjoyed any of that. <sighs> that that's a shame. Um, like I was telling you uh, before we went live, I've had five, you know the five back surgeries, and yeah, yeah. I don't I don't care for. Um, I have also have a history of uh, heroin addiction, so I don't do opiates. Um, Ninety seven to oh one, I was a complete junkie, homeless, all different kinds of shit. So I've come a long way. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I met my wife in two thousand one, and I was like, I had a choice to make. And she didn't know about it at the time, um, but I had a choice to make her or this shit. And I just like, OK, you're going to have to give me like two weeks is what I told her. Two weeks. I'm not going to be able to talk to you. I'm not going to be able to do. And I'll explain when I come out of this. I was afraid that if I told her I was that I wanted to prove beforehand, you know, that I could kick it and then tell her what I did, you know, um, instead of, you know, her because her, her father was an alcoholic. Um, and it kill, ended up killing him. So I was worried about, you know, her thinking that she's just going from one addict to another, that kind of thing. Sure. I mean, yeah. it, it all worked out, but she saved my life just by fucking existing. Um, so that's, that's my love story. Um, Oof. before we go to comments and I got other things I want to, I want to talk about. Um, but I want to, uh, one, one more thing. And it's one of the questions that I sent you earlier. Uh, who are some of your favorite authors that aren't Stephen King? Um, you've already said that you like thrillers and uh, and horror is your main consumption. So who do you like in those genres? All right. I've, I've been excited about this one, but also dreading it because I'm going to talk about what might be my absolute favorite book of all time, and it's a post-apocalyptic horror. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> hit, hit, hit me with it. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll end with that, but... Um, Nick Cutter is a big one. Uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly when his first book came out, um, but he recently published, uh, well, it was a couple of years ago, The Troop came out and it had, you know, Stephen King's endorsement on the front. And I went, 
ooh, let's see what this <laughs> is. And it was just the most gross out body horror meets Lord of the Flies. Uh, yeah, those really parasites good or whatever the fuck they were. Yeah, yeah. I, I've read I've read all of his stuff except for Little Heaven. So I've, I've read all of them as well. Um, really enjoyed Nick Cutter's stuff. And then there's a uh, Clay McLeod Chapman. Um, yes, familiar. Yeah, he wrote the remaking Whisper Down the Lane and most recently Ghost Eaters. Uh, he's also worked on a ton of uh, Marvel comics. Uh, he writes for them as well. He actually worked on that Wendell and Wilde yeah, show on I was, Netflix. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, the uh, Jordan Peele one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I actually had a, a, the good fortune of meeting um, cool. Clay in person uh, years ago before his career really took off. He was doing this, uh, this show called The Pumpkin Pie Show where he would like come and read got like spooky stories and stuff like that it was a cool. good time um and then of course uh the last one is robert mccammon um mm. and his novel swan song will always kind of be one of my all-time favorites if if not my favorite i have a hard time committing to that as i you know obviously feels like a betrayal of king um, <laughs> i was gonna i was that was gonna be the next question is uh the stand or swan song i'm ugh, guessing i'm, ugh, I'm ugh. you don't know i, oh, don't you, know. I, I see i see the i see the uncomfort just flowing from your yeah the cringe it's, i yeah. i i really love <laughs> swan song i'm not gonna lie it might it might be the one i prefer but i i I I don't know. I I tell you what. I'll have to someday make a video about Swan Song because I need to really dig yeah, into it do. before I can say with any certainty. Um, but even so, like my video about the stand was before I was like really like deep diving into my subconscious to try to pull out the deeper meaning and <laughs> like all my earlier videos. I'm doing the whole like here's what the story was about. Here's the characters. This was cool. I didn't like this so much. Final thoughts. Yeah. Uh, you know. And so now I'm. I've been thinking about just going back and digging a little further in. Uh, but the other Robert McCammon book that I particularly enjoyed was They Thirst, which was, you know, his vampire book. His, his Salem's Lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the tornadoes were a bit much for me, but it's it's a good it's a good book. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. And of course, you know, original Dracula could could fuck with the weather. So I'm going to let I'm going to let him pass. But that was a little much with the vampire controlled tornadoes. I was like, I'm here for it. But chill the fuck out bro uh, <laughs> but uh my favorite mccammon is uh gone south and then boy's life right after that uh i'm a huge fan of a boy's not boy's life but gone south just because of its themes yeah uh, i think it's the closest he's ever come um to his his aim to write and i i, I hate saying it this way but write a stephen king novel um because he's kind of been chasing dude his entire career True. and he's just as good um yeah you know, he's he's on par with with king and i still think back i still think to this day had king uh mccammon was a better fit than straub i love straub don't get me wrong sure no story a fucking classic absolutely but i think if we had gotten a mccammon king collaboration that would have been fucking amazing and that, I, I like to, i like to speculate about about things like that and i'm you know stephen king theorist over here but um yeah that but mccammon man i i love i love mccammon um the only thing i don't like about swan song is the opening line i think it's one of the worst ever it just kind of it's i it does not drag me in in fact i did a video ages ages ago about top five i was talking about top five fighting i made a list of everything yeah uh, top five worst openings uh, to a book i also did best openings but uh that one was number two so but other than that i think oh i had i admittedly can't remember what the opening line is it's it's very it it's hard to read out loud and i'm an author and how i edit uh is i read my stuff out loud to to make sure that it flows because if i'm going to stumble on it someone who doesn't know the story is definitely going to stumble on it and it is one of the most awkward sentences to to say out loud at least for me um, and it's something like uh, we had a love affair with fire. The president thought as he sat there and lighting his cigar with a match and tossing the match. It is almost a run on, but there is a comma in there. Like he he threw he threw a, a life preserver out there. Just that one comma. But other than that, the book the book's fine. Um, but I I do I do have a question for you. And I it, uh, I don't. Do you have a favorite opening or ending line? And the reason why this I'm literally like. 
I want to know how similar we actually are. Do you have an, a perfect King opening line or a perfect ending line that you read and it just, it stuck with you forever? Oh man, you know, it's so cliche to just think of the gunslinger, gunslinger immediately, yeah, the yep. you know, but that is, that is the first one that comes to mind. Uh, but I think predominantly because I'm having a hard time thinking of any others right hey, that, now. That, that's fine. That's fine. Mine, mine personally, my favorite, I think it's the best because of the themes and because of what the book is about and everything. I think the best closing line ever written, and this is period, is the very last line of Pet Cemetery. Darling, it said. It tells you everything you need to know in that one little bit. You have the term of endearment at the things all the books all about love and loss and family and all that it tells you that and then it tells you it said it tells you that the person saying that is no longer the person they were i think it is absolutely perfect um and as far as opening lines i don't even have one like i could the only thing that i could probably think of would be the gunslinger also yeah but yeah. the i sometimes i would literally just open up pet cemetery and read that final line um, and it just, it gives me goosebumps every single time. And it's also one of the main reasons why I despised, well, there's many reasons, despised the, the most recent remake, which, mm -hmm. uh, my friend Jake told me they've already filmed and they're going to release a prequel to that one. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, it blows my mind because that one was just so utterly awful. I don't know how you feel about it. If you want to talk about that, that's fine, but it exists. It's not something I enjoy. <laughs> I um I after making a handful of very like angry guy yells at camera videos about a few Stephen King movies, I I made I decided you know what I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to mm. just be mad and say terrible, horrible, mean things about a movie I don't like. So after. It was the creep shows. It was creep show two and three. I got very upset over and hated both so very, very much. There's a question over in chat about creep show three that we're going to get to in a second, but oh, I, no. I noticed that or it was like within the first 10 <laughs> minutes of us being live. Oh, but we're, no. we're going to get, we're going to get to, we're going to get to that in a second. But uh, anyway, so, so, okay. No comment. Is that, is that what you're getting at? I, 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 I actually did enjoy parts of it. I, the first time I saw it, I, deeply disliked it yeah and then the second time i watched it i was like all right be less hypercritical about what it's not doing for you and try to find something that it is and so if you watch my video for it Appreciate i essentially it. said you know what this 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 movie just tempted to take the themes of the of the original story and of the original film and kind of twist them a little bit. And instead of making it about this thing, they tried to make it about this thing and and then explore that instead of being like, they didn't kill the two year old and I don't like it. You <laughs> when you Boo. put it that way, when you put it that way. Yeah, no, God, they they. They re-examined the way that the the original movie and novel addressed the themes of death, and and in the initial in the novel, it's um, them arguing the parents about how they're going to talk to their child about death, and yeah. never ta they never talk about the ideology, they never talk about God and the afterlife, and then in this new movie that was what started to become the rift it was the wife had to believe in heaven because she killed her sister on accident and wanted to believe her sister was in a better place whereas um the husband was a doctor and this man of science he didn't believe in that kind of shit. so they were trying to determine how do we talk to our children about death through the lens of religion and god and so there was this kind of moment for me when I was watching it. I was like, aha, this is what I can talk about in this video without just being like, I didn't like this movie. Yeah. You know, I feel bad now because I was one of those they mad that they didn't kill the two year old. And when you put it like that, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, think of it this way, too. What's more threatening? A dead zombie two year old or a dead, dead zombie nine year old? I don't want to deal with either, but I get, you, I get where you're coming from. I get where you're coming from. Let me tell uh, you. But when, I also when my daughter have, was. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, no. You're 
well, all I'm going to say is I have a terrifying, I'm terrified, and my one true phobia is dolls. Well, spiders also, but the dolls are part of the spider thing. I was locked in a closet when I was a kid, and it was a spider infested doll cabinet. Oh, sweet um, Jesus. Yeah, so there was literally like a horror movie. They were like crawling out of the mouths and the eyes and whatnot. So it's a legitimate trauma response when I when I look at Gage in the original movie, um, lit- because he looks like a fucking doll. And yeah. one of the dolls in there had a, had on a t- top fucking top hat. So yeah, I, I the first movie I think is absolutely perfect. I don't care about the bad acting. I don't give a shit. I don't care. That movie is perfect. So I also have. It's also the very first Stephen King movie. I had experience with. We went to a drive-in, um, and my dad, being jackass he was, he wouldn't watch me. Um, so I had to go with my mother and her friend Andrita to go to a drive-in to watch Pet Cemetery. I had to pee. I I was sitting with my back to the driver's seat because um, I wasn't supposed to watch it. I was supposed to be asleep, but uh, I was in the wheel well, not wheel well, the foot well, uh, with my back up against that, and um, I turn around. To tell my mother I have to go to the bathroom, and at that exact fucking moment, Zelda come running at the screen. Oh, sweet Jesus! At that, Christ. I was nine, oh, no, nine years dude. old. I screamed, pissed all over myself. Um, but the, so the I have, I have an even though that's that might sound traumatizing. I have an affinity for that original movie. Like sure. that movie, in my mind, is perfect because it truly captured the horror and everything. Um, so I went into the remake completely biased. I wanted the same movie. I wanted the same story. And yes, I knew they weren't going to be killing Gage because they put it in the fucking trailer. Like, yeah. what the hell are you? Anyways, anyways. Yeah, that was that was. I, I hate it when movie trailers are like, "Here's the whole movie in two minutes or so less." Weird, man. You know? Why would you so do weird. that? And it's just getting worse. It's getting yeah. worse and worse. Anyway, Agreed. so if you're cool, I want to open up. Uh, chat to uh questions and i want to go all the way back up here to uh questions that we got from the jump uh brad perkins says mr doyle did creep show three make you wish you picked up another offer to be a completionist <laughs> you know th- i mean the sad part is he had nothing to do with creep show three no. i could have just skipped it no. entirely and no one would have given me any problems over it I, I yes, it's it's entirely me. You're absolutely right. I should have picked somebody else. I don't know, like someone who only published a couple of books, perhaps. And dude, you did an entire video on the Riverdale episode of the Carrie musical. <laughs> well, fuck. I'm sitting there going, this guy makes me look fucking lazy. How the hell did you? I didn't even know that thing existed until you. I'm sorry. I'm I, I, I'm sorry that you have to know about it. Honestly, uh, the only reason I found out about it is because I was like, ah, yes, I'll do everything that has to do with Carrie. That can't be that many. Seven, seven videos, seven videos in yep. the Carrie series. Oh, I watched all of them too. Yeah, I watched all of them too. That yeah, was, the Riverdale uh... one was enjoyable to make, but that was like I was definitely on my like. Oh, this is the first one where I get to just outright shit all over <laughs> what I'm talking about. It's funny because I built up an entire following based on rage reviews. Um, that, that was something that I started even before I had the channel. I was over on Goodreads. Uh, before I deleted my Goodreads, I had 15,000 followers. Oh my God. Um, and people were there for me to rage out. They wanted me to hate read things. And I never, I never, I got to preface this. I never went into a book expecting to hate it, not once. But did I use those rage reviews to build my career? I sure as shit did. And <laughs> it, it was something people like. I did a I did a review uh, for Alan Moore's Jerusalem, which is a bloated mess of a book. It has a really good three hundred page novel right in the middle of it. <laughs> Otherwise, it's 600,000 words and 1,200 pages long. And I did a review of, of that one, and I just went all in. It was mostly cussing. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Every other word was something foul. Um, as, as you can tell, t- just talking to me, I like the F word. Oh. Um, so there was, a, there was a lot of that. Um, that what single review got 10,000 likes. My like got more... My, my like had a bigger number than the number of reviews for the book. <laughs> the book, like, t- 
topped out at like eight. I don't know what it's at now, but before yeah. I deleted my Goodreads, it, it was like eight thousand reviews. I got ten thousand more people clicked like on that review. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that was my whole shtick for a long time. Recently, I would say probably last year around January or February, um, I was doing this uh, thing where I was uh, instead of doing individual reviews i was doing uh i was crunching everything together that i read in that month because i didn't have time to film i was working on big projects so on and so forth um and i realized as i was going through this i would i would usually finish a bad book i would finish everything that i started because i knew i could make content off of that experience but then i also realized that i had amassed a legion of followers that were only there for my rage that were only there to see me upset and only there to see me unhappy because they got joy from me disliking things. Yep. And I knew that had to change. Yeah. So when, when you were speaking to, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. It resonated with me for that reason, because I don't want to be that guy anymore. Now, if yeah. I'm not liking a book within like the first, I, I have a 15 and 50 rule. I watch a movie for 15 minutes. If you don't, if you, if you don't grab me, I'm out of there. 50 pages for a book. You get at least 50 pages because sometimes, I mean, I have some of my favorite books don't even get going until page 100. So I figure 50 is a good, you know, median there. Um, anyways, but yeah, I didn't like myself. You know, I didn't like what I was doing when I was putting out into the world, even though there, I had amassed all these fans who love that content. I didn't like it. I didn't yeah. like what I was doing. I didn't like that. I, I didn't even like the fact that I got on and just rambled for, you know, 10, 15 minutes at a time. And now all my videos are highly edited, highly. Um, there's jump cuts like, you know, every couple words sometimes yeah. because I'm cutting out all the uhs and ums and just me rambling on about, you know, what I like and what I don't like kind of thing that has has nothing pertaining to the to the book itself. Um, anyways, but I like I told you before, I'm also ADHD and touch of the tism. So my brain goes to <laughs> my brain goes to wild, wild places. Um that's that's funny about Creep Show Three. I have not watched that video yet. Um, okay, well, so, uh, I I don't know. I cringe I a little I bit. I, I cringe a little bit if I go back to like watch any of those particular Creep Show Two and Three videos in particular. I don't ever want to watch again at this point because I'm just I'm just uh, mad the whole time and I'm just shitting on it the whole time. But you know, I it was I'm glad I did those though because I was like I didn't really enjoy that. Uh, you know, not, yeah. so now I'm not going to keep doing that um, unless I'm forced to, which is entirely possible. It could happen again. You know, if I if I'm forced, I, I'm forcing myself to do it. No one's holding a gun to my head like watch this shitty movie or you're going to pay a price for it. Uh, See, but that's one of the things I was talking about earlier is like, you know, the when when you start doing channels like we have, yeah. people have certain expectations. Right. Um, and they they either respect our opinion or they want new information or whatever it might be. And that can get under your skin very quickly. It's like, I am sometimes I'm not allowed to like or dislike something um, because I, I have to worry about what chat, what comments are going to, you know, and yeah. I, I try to interact with you interact with all your fans too. There's another thing I respect about you is that you're always in the comment section, you know, talking to people and I'm sure you've gotten at least one hate comment in two fucking years. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm positive. Um, and I can, I, in fact, this is the first thing I was thinking when you got to uh, in, in the it video, when you got to the radical leftist part, I'm like, Ooh, is this comment section going to be fucking toasty? Um, and I went, I was surprised to see, I don't know how much you had deleted or if you even delete, but I was surprised to see it was good. I'm in, most part. Uh, yeah, I'm in a allow all comments channel and I don't delete them. Um, I've been in a few fights with people about rage in particular uh, in the comment section. A fight is too strong a word, of course, but I named my rage video Richard Bachman's Rage is a Dangerous Book. Mm -hmm. And there are people who in the comments section were like, a book can't be dangerous. A book doesn't kill people. And I'm like, I know the book didn't fucking murder people, you jackasses. <laughs> I know the book didn't do it, but when there's something like a dozen instances of people having your book in their possession and then literally murdering people, yeah. 
there's nothing wrong with King choosing to take the book oh, off the shelf. He I, wasn't I censored. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. no. They were like, oh, that's censorship. I don't. Blah, blah, blah. It wasn't censorship. It was. It was literally found in a locker at the yeah. school where the shooting happened. Yes. Um, and I erroneously, erroneously said uh, way back in the day, I thought it was Columbine, oh. um, but a friend of mine uh, update updated me, not updated, but he informed me that it wasn't Columbine. It was a completely different one. But at this point in time, it's getting so out of control. It's like, what's the new flavor of Who the can week? Keep track. Not even week, the day. I mean, yeah. we've had more mass shootings in this country. I don't want to get off on a tangent. More mass shootings in this country than we've had days this year. Just tangent, this year. Tangent. Ten, no, tangent. No, we're not doing tangents. Let, <laughs> let, let's go. Let's go to chat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Talk, okay. We can definitely do a, a topic like that, though. Well, I mean, my my second uh, obsession is is politics um mm. so i am covertly using my stephen king channel to bring <laughs> politics to into the conversation in <laughs> that's right that's right yeah oh, oh hang on don't worry hang i'm on. just a i'm just a harmless little booktuber nothing yeah. to worry about and then <laughs> I, bam I, I, I marxism it, when when you do hit yeah when you do hit i I'm always I'm always just over there with a little fucking smirk on my face because we share damn near all all the goddamn every, we got we got so much so much in common. And I'm yeah. I'm over here scrolling through. I'm still I'm still listening, I promise, but I'm looking yeah, for Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say uh for those who, you know, are 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 here who didn't get to hear that half hour of us chatting, uh it turns out the two of us have a lot in common uh like scary amounts like really bizarre coincidental things um just, just off the rip we're both uh i'm 42 he's 41 we both are married with two kids we both are musicians um we both i didn't even i didn't want to interrupt you and cut you off but of course i was not reading books during my heroin stand i'm sure right. you, i'm sure you realize that yeah so i kind of fell out of love with reading around 90 96 97 and I didn't really get back. I was writing and selling books before I got back into reading more than two or three books a year. It wasn't until probably 2010, 2011, um, when I really got deep into internet culture that I started finding my people again. I found Goodreads, you know, all this other stuff. I, I published, uh, I, I just started the, the, I can't, I'm not supposed to talk, I'm, since I want to leave this video up, I can't talk about the other name, but we already, we already talked about the other name. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, you know, that that was starting to take off. I published the first book under that name, so on and so forth. Um, and so it was it was a good from 97 to 2011. I might have read two or three books a year. Um, and usually they were Stephen King books. So that's another reason why I asked, you know, is it just King for you? Because that's some people. It's just King. Like they don't, they won't read. And me being, and you being a king centric channel, I don't know if you come across these people or not, but they're literally comments that say, I don't read anyone else but King. And that's the only author I can think of that I've ever heard that about. Like, you know, there are not people out there only reading Jackie Collins. There's not people out there only reading James Patterson or uh, the Da Vinci Code guy, Dan Brown. It's yeah, yeah. only King has that. And like you were saying, He's fucking addictive. Once you get into one, you either want to reread it right away or you want to move on to something new. And yep. I, I find that just absolutely amazing. Um, Brad, can I spill the beans, E? What do you mean? I don't know what you mean. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm Not the beans. I don't, I don't know what beans. It was, a, it was a while ago. What time is it? It's 9.38 and it was at 9.02. What beans are you, what, what beans are you spilling? Brad. Brad, 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 where are the beans at, Brad? <laughs> there is no ending of it. Hang on. Yeah, the Christopher Bilko, and this is just a comment, um, just to say, I, I, there, there is no ending of any series that is perfect, but that can be said about literally any form of media. Um, there's no perfect movie. There's no, I mean, some of us think there are perfect movies. Mine is Howard the Duck. I'm of course wrong, but I stand <laughs> by that. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm not even kidding, dude. It's, it's my favorite movie of all time. I've watched it hundreds of times. Oh my um, God. Yeah, there is no ending of, a, of any series that's perfect and is perfect for everyone. True. So good and fulfilling is the best any writer would want at most likely. This is very, very true. 
Uh, and then my friend Tony, who's a Maki Clan 7798, says, Hello, hello, e. hello, Mr. Doyle. Glad to see you here, man. I love your channel. I'm a huge fan of yours. He's oh talking to you because uh. Tony doesn't like me at all. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, I greatly appreciate that. Um, you know, I've seen quite the uh, uptick in uh, subs and, and views here in this last couple of weeks. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. I think my newest thumbnail for yeah, Needful Things thumbnail was pretty on point. I was really it happy was. with that one. Um, but yeah, thank you, uh, Uzumaki. It's It's been really exciting to uh, start to see some growth because I have felt more discouraged than encouraged a lot of the time until I see somebody say something like that. And then I'm just like, oh, okay, great. I'm not doing it just yeah, for myself. It's amazing how that one positive comment can change your whole fucking day absolutely and that, i think that's the reason why i'm still doing it just to have uh someone you know and i and i get it i'm i, I hate saying shit like this because it feels like bragging but you know you'll get someone who like you know i you rekindled my love for reading that that'll make my fucking month man absolutely. if someone say that that i have brought someone back to the into the fold or that i have like i have created a love of reading or that they want to go back and read it so they can read deeper to catch all these connections and everything hell I yeah love man. That, man that's what it's all about brad says i'm from rochester is that how you say rochester 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 sorry rochester. i knew i was gonna get it wrong with anything with chester in it is never pronounced the same way <laughs> ever it's like Whiskey we've or whatever we've got is. Worcester up here where I'm from. Worcester. <laughs> it looks like Worcester, but that's not what it is. Uh, Brad, uh, we're about three hours away from each other, as a matter of fact. Uh, I was last in Rochester to see the band Queens of the Stone Age at the Dome. Uh, that was a great show. That was, uh, God, that was like five years ago now, I think. But um, yeah, um, I I don't divulge a lot about where I live. You're on fine. The you don't internet. have to. I'm just I'm it, just gonna throw that out there. You don't have yeah, to. Yeah. No, I, I won't. I'm not gonna. I I've always been weirded out. That's why I, I strictly use my last name. Uh, I just try to keep some anonymity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, weirds me out having everybody know where I live. Mr. Although I have 100% doxed myself on a handful of occasions, oh, like without realizing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to do a thing called, uh, well, not saying called, I used to do unboxing videos. Um, and somehow, out of like 30, 40 videos, I never once accidentally showed my address. Um, but I did get doxxed at one point in time. Um, and we ended up having to move. I got feces in the mail for my review of Bird Box. Oh, of my all God. Things. Yeah. Um, someone, was it in uh, a box? It was literally in a box. Um, and... <laughs> And on top of the fecal matter was a card that was written very pr prettily that said, this is what I think of your bird box review. And it was human feces. Wow. I know, I know it was human feces because it was the police were called. The police oh came out. God. Laboratories did the testy test. Oh, no. And the person was eventually arrested because the dumbass dropped it off at the post office. So the, there was video of them dropping oh, it off the post office. So yeah, oh, they were no. they they sat in jail for like three years. It was it was lovely. Uh, but can, um, I, uh, can I tell my poop in the box? Yeah, story? yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Please. Please. I love poop <laughs> All right. in the box. Okay. All right. I'll try to keep it quick. I'll try to keep it no, quick. You're fine. Okay. I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing good. So you you're fine. I actually told my parents this story for the first time a couple weekends ago, uh, so <laughs> I feel free to say it on the internet now. Let's go. Okay, so growing up in a small house with a single bathroom, sometimes you have an emergency situation and you cannot wait for yeah. the bathroom to become available. Oh, so I came home from school with my sister one day. She had to use a bathroom. I urgently needed to use the bathroom. She got there first. So what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I ran down in the basement. I found a box. I took care of my business. And then I ran it out to a cornfield, which is what we were surrounded by where I grew up. And I left it in the middle of this field. The next day, my friend comes by. We're walking up the street. And from a, like a mile away, he's like, hey, what is that over there in the field? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know. We should go and see what it is. So we go over and he opens it. He's like, oh, my God, it's shit. And I just had to be like, ah, that was mine. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, 
You literally played out the ending of Seven with fucking shit. What's, What's in the, the box? box? What's in the box? Now, I have a story. This is getting creepier and creepier, dude. <sighs> I have a story. It's going to be super quick, but it's damn near the same story. But it was me and my wife. My young, my oldest was about six months old. And we both had bad Taco Bell the night before. We both get up at the same time the next morning. We both run to the bathroom. And me being the gentleman that I am, I was like, baby, just go. Just go. Just go. Just hurry the fuck up and go. Just go. So she's in there and she literally hollers, it won't stop. And I'm like, and here I am. I'm like, it's over. It's done with. It's a, So I dash into the, the kitchen, rip the lid off the trash can, and I shit in my own <laughs> trash can. And it was sitting there because the trash can was fucking full, dude. With Just on top of all the wrappers and everything from Taco Bell, I literally recycled that shit. <laughs> literally. Sitting right on top of the... It's so fucking weird, man. We got way too much in common. Uh, Boggle Clean said, "Now we're going to move on from that." Yeah, moving on, moving on. Uh, that, that's that's a whole clip in itself. That's oh, one hundred. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 going up there. Anyways, oh my god, I love Swan Song and Boy's Life. I need to read those again. It's been forever. Um, Boy's Life. Uh, that's a very special book. Um, I prefer Gone South. That that's just my own personal thing. Yeah, but Boy's yeah. Life. That shit is magical. That is the that is exactly what Stephen King was talking about when he said books are a uniquely portable type of magic. I, yeah, that's not a, a uniquely portable magic. I'm pretty yeah, sure that was you, the quote. Yeah, exactly. Um, I always want to put in typo, but uh, that's a, that book is exactly what he was talking about. That's one of those those books that take you back to your childhood. Hell that's one yeah. of those books that just make you relive everything good about yes. being a kid before Definitely. The, before you realize the world wants you dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. McCammon, uh, Sean says McCammon King collab would be sick. We need to petition them. I doubt it will ever happen, but, um, yeah. I yeah. mean, I assume McCammon's still alive. Oh yeah. He, oh yeah. He's that. In fact, he was just in Birmingham, uh, last year, I think. Well, he could have died since then, but I'm sure he's alive. I, I know he's alive because he's got a new book coming out and all that. Uh, he's oh, doing that Matthew excellent. something series. Okay. I don't know what it is. Um, Revival had a great first line in one way, at least. Our lives really are like movies. I was about to pull it out, but that's it. I, I know that. Um, that is that is a good line. Um, yeah, it is. And we got a Pet cemetery one. I'm looking for questions, but I'm also seeing uh, good comments. Uh, my biggest complaint with the Pet cemetery remake is how they messed up Judd and Lewis. Yes. Yeah, relationship. Yeah. Yeah. In the remake, they are almost antagonistic towards each other. Uh, Pet Cemetery, beside having my favorite final line of all time, that opening line about him finding his father figure is, is brilliant also. Because and and you're absolutely right. You know, uh, not only did John Lithgow not do a great job in my opinion, but then again, I'm still you know I, I'm I'm for Herman Munster. I got to have Herman Fred Munster. Quinn. Uh, Fred yeah, Quinn. Fred Quinn. He was he was the quintessential <laughs> Judd. It's hard to see anybody else in the role, honestly. It, Exactly. Sometimes yeah. dead is better, and I can't do a. <laughs> I can't do a. Uh, but he he nailed that line. He did. Uh, closing line: the long walk, and when the hand touched his shoulder again, he somehow found the strength to run. And Patrick, Patrick, I wanted to. We we brought you up beforehand, and we we both know you. You're pretty much infamous, by the way, if you don't know, in yes. the Stephen King creator community, um, and. Me and Mr. Doyle both both appreciate you. Uh, it, it's nice to to know that we haven't run you off, or you know, where you you have to be like you're wrong all the time. I hate you. <laughs> so it's a good litmus test to whether or not a a, a channel is you know, a, a king channel is decent if we see a good comment like <laughs> from you underneath it. Underneath it, Patrick uh, is an excellent barometer. Oh yes, definitely. No, for real though, Patrick, uh, uh, you've been like one of my most regular commenters for the longest time uh, in my channel's existence. So I really do appreciate that you've been following along and always have uh, uh, cre uh, constructive criticisms. If you have criticisms, you've never been cruel or mean about it. Uh, and you haven't, you definitely haven't been uh, wrong 
<laughs> on those occasions and uh also I've, ne I've never found him wrong either like no. uh, and most of the time it's usually me i when i do see a patrick comment sometimes i have to cool myself down because i'm mad at myself like oh what did i do oh no yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it, it's not just it's it's not like an automatic thing but when he does catch me on stuff which he has plenty of times and i'm like Fuck, now I got to either reshoot the video or I got to do another redux or I got to. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, I have to remind myself at the end of the day that, you know, we are going to uh, we're going to have those instances where we fuck something up and we can choose to get mad at the person who's trying to help us or we can take that and we can move on. But like you said, it's always constructive criticism. He points it out. And he's like, hey, this, that, and the other, you know, and then you go back and you check. And it only takes so many times to check something that he says to, before you just like automatically, you're like, fuck, if he said it, it must be true. Yo, so, hold on. Before right. we move on from Patrick, yeah. that that man, I hope you're listening, Patrick, is incredible. He, yeah. bought, I, he, he, he may have mentioned this to you. He put all of the texts of Stephen oh, yeah. King into that it. search. Oh, you have that? I have it. How do you think? Well, I, okay, let me. <laughs> Let me. A lot of the stuff that I have for the Redux series came yeah. from Patrick. No um, unfortunately, I finished filming the Redux series. The entire thing's been done Holy crap. before I got his database to work. Oh. But now that I have the database working, I am now going through and I'm going to be doing videos. Once the Redux is done, I'm going to be doing videos just searching for specific terminologies like the shop. How many, which books they pop up in, how many times it pops up in. I can also just go through my videos because he has literally commented on every single one of my videos about how many times certain words pop up. Yes. The only thing we're going to have problem with is the number 19. You know how oh, important 19 is, yeah. but it's not always the number 19. Sometimes it's how many letters are in someone's name. Sometimes it's an address that added up to, or like in uh, later, it's a combination to someone's unlock screen on their phone adds right. up to 19. It's crazy. Um, M twice says King drops band names on his works all the time. Are there any examples where either of you were surprised by what band King mentioned? I'm going to I'm going to give you the boring one because no, um, I know how. I know how influential music was to him, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he listened to Little Nas X. You know, I, I, I honestly, <laughs> that's honestly, I wouldn't be a bit surprised um, because he's he always he of course loves classic rock and all that stuff and country music and whatnot, but uh, he also listens to new stuff. You'll see him on Twitter talking about, "Hey, I found this new band, go check it out." So, no, I'm never surprised. How about you, Mr. Doyle? Ah. Uh you know, I, I'm trying to think of uh, a time he surprised me when talking about music, but I keep, I think, I keep thinking of this article he wrote. It was uh, about like, what was your, what do you think is the most overrated band and what's the most underrated band? And for the life of me, like, I, I'm trying to remember who he named as the most overrated. I'm pretty sure he said the Beatles. Uh, I, would, he was, I, I think I, he was I, trolling, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> I, I would I would agree with that. Moving on. Okay. Yep. Moving on. Next question. Uh, he not, said. He said. I'm not credence. getting shot at tonight. I'm not getting shot at tonight. It's not gonna. It, it's not gonna happen. Hey, yeah, e yeah. Mr. Bill. Great combo tonight. What is your favorite King story? For me, so many come to mind, but the jaunt would be my favorite. I once again, I got to give the boring answer because the jaunt is my favorite as well. It's the implications of the entire story. Um, the story is super short. Uh, for King anyways, we're not talking about a 30, 60 page short story like he normally right. does. Yeah. We're not talking about rainy season or anything like that. Um, it is so perfectly stark and succinct and it leaves so much unanswered. That's, That's the brilliant part about that story is that there are no answers. So your mind is going to fill in all of those blanks and the mind is a scary fucking place. How about I, you? Uh, I go to... Uh... Probably either, uh, man, all right, I'm going to say one definitively instead of say, well, it's either this or that. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, I Am The Doorway. Ooh, um, I, I will say this too. The title to that story, I don't know what it is, but just those words in that order, I find fascinating. That's cool. I really like it. And then, of course, the themes are, you know, the guy has something inside of him taking control of him and and he can't stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and, and it 
you know, I saw that as an analogy while I was reading it of, you know, like addiction and alcoholism and, and the things inside of you, you can't control, or perhaps it was like a mental disorder or something like that. I mean, obviously in the story, it's literally like <laughs> an, an alien presence inside of this man. Eyes, yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can't, so. you know, sorry, sorry. No, please go ahead. Okay. It, just, it reminds me of that movie, the gate. You yeah. remember the gate? Yeah, when that the eye and the hand and uh, that just that bothers me because I'm I am not a fan of eye horror. Um, it it bothers me like that. What is it, zombie or zombie two, whatever that famous scene? Oh, where the, with this, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. I can't. No, no, that 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 that's too much, my friend. That's too much. Uh, this is directly for you, Mr. Doyle. Do you own keep all of your outfits from your videos? <laughs> okay, so I currently have a costume rack now. So do I. But yeah, it's just shirts. Anyways. It's lab coats, uh, hospital johnnies, uh, Love Love various blood spattered dress shirts and yeah i own it all now i mean i'm i'm trying to only like i finally realized like i need to start buying things that i will actually need again because yeah. it's getting out of control so like for the it series i started to just buy t-shirts that had mane on them um and uh you know if i gotta if i gotta wear a dress shirt i'll wear one that actually fits me that i can reuse obviously the one for craig to me is covered in blood now so yeah. i won't be reusing that one but yeah i own all of those costumes that that's very very cool um the it, it's funny because patrick even mentioned this he's like do you plan on wearing a different shirt in every single one of your videos if so what are you gonna do with those shirts? I'm like, <laughs> I, I didn't know what else to say to him. I'm like, wear them. I don't, I don't know. I, I have them. They're, they're, they exist. Amazing. Uh, Jake, Jacob Brennan <laughs> says, e, "You found your Twitter." That's right. <laughs> Od oddly, odd, oddly, yes. Uh, it's, it's very weird. Um, I, it's, it's nice, but it's also very, very weird how much we have in common. E and Mr. Doyle are my two favorite Stephen King YouTubers. I am deeply honored, especially because you are so picky. And I say that in the best possible way, because I know when you say that, it's like a super honest friend who will tell you when you got a booger hanging out your nose or toilet paper hanging out <laughs> your pants. You are that friend. And yes. I, I yes. deeply appreciate you. Um, and you're making my job so much fucking easier with this damn database of yours uh, but yeah he can search every, he can search everything um and it's a it's i, I couldn't get it, I, I use linux so i couldn't get it to work on windows for the longest time and he kept saying i sent you the damn database why don't you look he didn't say it like that but oh, yeah, he's yeah. like you can do this in the database you can search for those things because i was literally calling him out in the videos and be like patrick will you check this for me <laughs> <laughs> i literally got desperate at one point in time i discovered e and mr doyle by searching for videos about the long walk yes um let's see here here you go. Mr. Doyle's essay on needful things was freaking majestic. I will agree 100%. Um, that and it are probably my favorite out of your uh, catalog so far. Thank you. Um, have you, have you, I, I got to ask you this question before we continue on with this, because we got several other questions. Um, have you hit burnout yet? Like to a point where one week you just don't want to fucking do it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I figured yeah. two years. I mean, yeah. for, for a while there, um, you know, I was doing every week and then it became every other week. And now it's literally like whenever the fuck I get yeah, to it. I don't know. Um, actually, the script for Needful Things, every night I would sit there and I would open the file and I would look at it and I would close it and go to sleep. And that was going, that happened like every night for a week straight. And then I finally was like, okay. Your sub counts are starting to go up a little bit because for some reason that's I did, it happens. So yeah, it was it happens. It was like 45 days since I'd released a video, and all of a sudden my subscriber count started going up. And I was like, you should probably make a video because people are actually paying attention here. Right. Um, and honestly, it was just like, all right, well, um, I'm gonna I I do all of my scripts on uh Google Docs from my phone. Like that is how I do them now, because uh, it's the most convenient. If inspiration inspiration strikes and I'm taking a shit, I can fucking type it in there real quick. You know, I can't do that with my laptop or my notebook or whatever. 
Um, so everything goes into into the docs. But like I would open that doc and for like a week or two. This yeah, my, uh, there you go. That's all the all the all the stuff I have left to do. And, awesome. and that, that's all I'm just saying. I do this. I do the same thing. Can, please continue on. Sorry, yeah, no, no I, it, it, yeah, but burnout, burnout, or of some sort had set in. But I don't. I can't really put it all on the channel. It was just like I got a full time job. I got yeah. a full time family. Uh, my wife is in the process of opening up a, a photography studio right now. So I'm spending my free time there helping her get her studio ready for the big opening this coming Dude, weekend. You, you rock. You Thank you. Rock. Thank you. you. Absolutely, absolutely right. I, I love, I love that. Get away from me. Uh, I got like a, I live in Alabama. So these little gnats will come in when I open my office door and I literally shoot and film and even read out in a shed in a climate yeah. controlled shed out in my yard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but the reason why is so I'm not bothering my wife who does her own blogging and graphic stuff and video game research and everything when she's inside. I love people who take care of their significant other. And when, when they're doing well, you know, they, they don't just forget about that other person. They, they, they go and they help. And yeah, you know, I, I just, I respect that so damn much because you, you constantly see, especially in men, um, when we start to see a little bit of success or we get a hobby, that person kind of vanishes off the face of the planet in, in that person's head. And I'm, I can't say that I am not, I haven't had thoughts like I got my own shit to do, but she always comes first for me. You know, if she needs something, damn it, I'm, it's going to fucking happen. Yes, sir. Um, Cause she's, she's been through everything with me since we already talked about shit stories she's literally had to wipe my ass before oh um, no yeah because my my surgeries affect You're back yeah, yeah uh, affect yeah. that so uh yeah she's literally oh, had to clean God. me up this this is a bout it woman she yeah is, i'd say she is there for it um let's see here i finished my second listen of it how many times are you planning on reading it uh patrick i'd love to hear that from you uh if you have you probably haven't but brad's tattoo is amazing um if i can get your permission brad i will forward it because i still have your email i believe i will forward it to mr doyle just I would love give to me see it. just give me a thumbs up because it yeah. is fucking amazing all right so we got another question for you mr doyle i'm curious what your thoughts are on the theme of consumption Throughout King's work, this is for a whole other video. But yeah, uh, if you aren't familiar, E, maybe you can sum up what I'm talking about. Um, we have kind of narrowed down Stephen King's entire career, um, not only to imagination and the power of imagination, but to, and that, that's on my end. Jake, is, uh, I haven't talked to Jake about this, but how consumption plays a unique, special role in the Stephen King universe as far as even in in movies, even in books like Christine, how it kind of eats Arnie alive, kind of, you know, the, it kind of sucks the life out of him to the true not to the vampires in Salem's lot to all of the to the, the spoilers, spoilers to the outsider, Pennywise, the Greys, all all of those. All these monsters are about consumption, even to some extent. Annie Wilkes is about consumption. She wants another book from Paul Sheldon. She wants, she, it's all about bleeding you dry. You know, they're, they come, it's a revolving theme with King's work that the protagonist is being consumed by something. Um, even so much as with Pet Cemetery, you're being consumed by grief, whether uh, that the consumption is a monster or whether it's an emotion, even consumption when it comes down to alcoholism with uh yeah. with you know the shining all, all yeah. of and dr sleep and all that so i'm sure we can sit here and talk for a while on that but if you want to give some thoughts on that um maybe we'll tackle it because i have a insanely long video coming up and i still need to talk to jacob about some other stuff but uh, uh just about mm -hmm consumption so any any words on that uh i mean you know honestly um i hadn't really thought about that particular word in relation to these stories and you know the the 
entirety of the bibliography but like after you started rattling them off i was like yeah i can see how that would play a role yep that makes sense uh, yeah i mean that is a kind of a, a core tenant of a lot of king's writing is that something is either literally or metaphorically eating this person up or uh, chewing them up and spitting them out in some sort of way. Uh, you know, at first when I saw consumption, I thought you meant like consumerism and corporatism. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, but no, Anarchy, nobody, baby. <laughs> yeah, nobody needs to hear me talk about that right now. But um, that's yeah. another video. But yeah, I mean, I, there, there's certainly a through line there. Hard to deny it, honestly. Yeah. yeah very cool. I think we're on to something. Uh, me and, and Jacob, uh, I call him Jake, but me, me and I think, I think we are on to something, especially things like needful things, how an item, the possession of something can consume you. I mean, it just, it, yeah, it's a, it's, it, it there's a lot. Uh, there, in fact, I will forward you what Jake sent, has sent me already because he was just playing off of something I said in one of my videos. And then he has this huge list. But anyways, I'll, I'll forward that to you. Uh, Brad says, Mr. Dole, have you watched Midnight Mass? And if so, what are your thoughts? I actually, I have watched it. Uh, Midnight Mass is actually one of the like most recent series I've actually watched to completion. Uh, other than like the boys, because I just... I couldn't get enough of just the gory superhero it's so stuff. It's, it's so good. Uh, like it has political stuff. It's got over the top gore. It's it was action blockbuster material. That so as far as Midnight Mass goes, I I was pretty enthralled by that series. I could not stop watching it. It was yeah. one of those um, I should have gone to bed two episodes ago kind of series for me. And I haven't had one of those in quite a while. Um, I, I do not know the actor's name, but the guy that played the the reverend, the father there at the church. Oh, uh, um, Link, uh, Hamish, Hamish Linkletter, okay. I believe is his name. I thought he was fantastic, honestly. Uh, Hamish, um, Hamish Linkletter is his name. I thought, he, yeah, I he's th amazing. Uh, yeah, I thought, the, honestly, as far as uh, acting goes, there was only one or two kind of weak links in there for me. But oh, yeah. for the most part, like the overall themes and just the aesthetics of the show, I really vibed with it. It was it was a, 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 a home run for me, honestly. It was the closest. It's now my favorite TV show of all time. Yeah. It is the closest anyone has ever come to a Stephen King adaptation that wasn't a Stephen King adaptation. Amen. And the whole way it was born, I'm not, I don't want to get into too many details, but the whole way it was born was he couldn't, Flanagan couldn't do Salem's Lot. So he literally said, fuck it, I'm going to do what I want. I'll do my own um, Salem's Lot. Hmm? I said, I'll do my own Salem's Lot. Yeah, I'll do my Lot, own. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. All I heard of that one was, was Salem's Lot. My apologies. But it's yeah. It's all good. Um, it's a, uh, I have massive respect for flanagan but we could do an entire fucking episode on flanagan too hell yeah um oh thank you brad you guys are the best the love you have for your fans is overwhelming and i'm so glad you guys decided to stream for us i'm i am beyond thrilled that uh first you you bringing up mr doyle period um to to have found it i love the sense of discovery and when i discovered you through brad it was that magic that i love so much i'm like this guy's fucking good like he 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 has his ducks in a row also another thing i respect about you and i wanted to say this earlier but the fact that you don't cut out all of your fuck-ups um <laughs> the, the funniest i do i do the same thing um where i will either make myself laugh or i will stumble on a word and be a little and you do the same thing i love that about you because it's this shit isn't that serious. We're making we're making content for people to watch, and they don't want to just sit there and listen to, uh, listen to us just ramble on about something with with no entertainment value. Um, so yeah, mad respect for that because Thank not you. everybody will do that. They'll they'll edit out. <laughs> I can't remember which one it was, but you were literally like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I made a decision early on because I was editing the video and I was just like, 
but that's the best part of the video. Like I was, <laughs> I was, I was trying to be funny when I started the channel, and then like I was just like, I don't think I'm very good at writing jokes, so I'm just gonna I don't leave know, the Gary bloopers was in. To me. <laughs> I had my, my opinion. That's just All my right. when he, when your ass popped up in that wig. I'm sorry. <laughs> that alone that alone was brilliant because I just opened up my entire like series wearing that stupid and it's still a regret to this day. Um because it looked bad on me. I'm sweating. I got this yarn hair that my mother made for me. It's a, one of my my lost my mother in 2020, but uh yeah. she she made all the stupid little uh hats that I that I wore. Um, in some of the videos, she made Hell the church yeah. hat uh, yeah. from uh, for Pet Cemetery, all that stuff. <laughs> so they're prized possessions, but I look utterly fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> and it's like the things the things we do that are think that we think are going to be good ideas that sometimes they land, sometimes they don't. But I think what you were saying was, you know, if you force it, it's not going to be good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's the natural stuff that 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 makes people laugh and people have fun with. Um, all right, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna read the rest of them. Jake's got one at a timestamp of 10:06, and then I have to go. We're gonna, I, so four more, four right. more, and we're all we're right. gonna we're gonna call it quits. Sounds good. Uh, and then I'm gonna ask you where they can find you and all that other good stuff. Sounds good. Um, who are some of your favorite and least favorite King characters? Uh, for me, I have to go with Tom and Nick um, from uh, The Stand, uh, Wireman and Edgar from Duma Key, um, and. Uh, I could be here. I, I would say my favorite Stephen King character of all time, hands down, very controversial opinion, Holly Gibney. Um, she is basically me with different body parts. So <laughs> it's, it's like a female version of me because I am I am that hyper focused on things. Um, when I get into something, it's like a fucking laser pointer and I can't be pulled once again, ADHD and a touch of the tism that that laser pointer gets on something and I am hyper fixated. Uh, but for you, who's yours? Oh, that is a tough one. Um, uh, Larry Underwood uh, was always a favorite. Uh, Baby, you know, can you dig your man? Yeah, he had like that underdog, uh, you know, character building arc where he like, you know, you don't know which way he's going to go. And then he ultimately, you know, he goes the route of righteousness and, and yeah. becomes a hero. Um, and I feel the same way about Eddie Dean and that he's kind of a similar oh, yeah. character. Um, so I, I'd say those are among my favorites. Uh, least favorite. That's a tough Oh, I didn't even give you my lease, but yeah. Go yeah, ahead. I, I, I do want to say I've never understood the Holly hate. I've never understood why Neither people don't like Holly Gibney. I've always enjoyed her as a character. She's unique from all of King's other characters. It was something completely different, and I yeah. appreciated it. Um, and I'm I, looking I forward it. to the book. It's Me too. like two months away, two months maybe? Yeah, September or something. Uh, uh, soon. So yeah. Yeah, two months. Yeah. Least favorite. Um, least favorite. Uh Oh, I can't remember her name. Uh, Julie Lowry uh, from The Stand. She was like the snotty, like, yeah. she tries to get Nick to have sex with her. And then yes. she gets all mad at him. And it's not because she was poorly written. I just think she's a bitch. That's funny because I always think of her as Nadine Cross. Because I think the original series mashed those two characters together. And Lori isn't even in the, the original series. I completely forgot that, that it's been a while since I read the stand. She's um, not an integral part of the story, no. really. You could take her out for the most part. I mean, she does try to kill them at one point, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. She she tries to shoot him. From yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. I mean, um, Na Nadine Cross is detestable because of who oh, yeah. she is as a character, but, but she is has a, a good she has character. Arc. Yeah, she yes. has a great arc. She does. A very good arc. She does. Um, as far as least favorite, I'm going to get flack for this one, but we're going to be controversial up in this bitch. Um, Randall Flagg. Mm -hmm. I hate Randall Flagg. I've never liked the character. He's the Crimson King's lackey. Um, he, Just a bitch. I, yeah, exactly. That's pretty much all he is. Um, uh, uh, that's how I feel about it. And uh, yeah. everyone can disagree with me. I'm fine with that. But there is no, there is nothing, everything he does, he fails at. And I don't understand why the Crimson King bothers with him um, because, and I like Alan Pangborn too, but, but no, Bannerman, 
it's Bannerman love around this place. I'm going to tell you, no, like, Pangborn's <laughs> great, but Bannerman is the OG motherfucker. So. True, true, true. A- anyways, but I, I like to joke about that. I'm like, we don't talk about Alan Pangborn, right? <laughs> but anyways, not in this um, house. I do like, I do like Alan. I, I do like uh, Needful Things and, and that stuff. But I, I would say if anytime someone brings up their favorite Stephen King villain and they say Randall Flagg, it takes everything in my power to not roll my eyes into the back of my head because he doesn't do anything right. Why is it? Why does the Crimson King keep using him for shit? I mean, he's the ageless stranger. He's Walter. He's uh, Andre Linoge in, in my head. Yeah. He's Eve Black from Sleeping Beauties in my head. Um, it, I mean, it, Black is in the name, man. And, anyways, but yeah, that yeah. episode is coming up in a couple days, guys. Come oh, back. good. But, uh, <laughs> but um, and he he's flag. He's he's all these he's all these things. He's even RF. In the Quimby, I don't. Okay. Anyways, I know. I know. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna leave we're gonna leave that alone. That could be another whole episode. But I haven't even finished the series. You know what? And I read every single King book that comes out day you one. Just, you just gave me my least favorite character. I couldn't think of who it would be. It's freaking Gwendy. By the end of the Gwendy trilogy, I'm like, oh, oh aren't you just so perfect? Does she, does she really go to space? Yeah. Oh. Oh, my oh yeah. God. Oh I haven't God. read it. I refu- I gave the, my my favorite rage review of all time is my review of that second book. I love the first one. I could feel King throughout the whole thing. Yep. But the second one was nothing but glorified fan fiction. Yes. Fuck off. Yes. Dick Jismark. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, Patrick. Uh, oh, I, I I know where this is going, and yeah, I've seen it, and I don't I don't like it at all. Some booktubers get angry at me for correcting their mistakes. Some tell me to get a life, but Ian and Mr. Doyle both appreciated my feedback and don't take it personally. There's nothing to take personally. This isn't the the thing is we we have come so far as a, a uh, as a society that well we've gotten so backward as a society that mistakes are no longer tolerated. Yeah. People are going to make mistakes. And to have someone respectfully say, hey, you missed this or that didn't actually happen. Here's what actually happened. And here's the fucking evidence. Yes, why, there's why, one why thing, would, there's why one thing Patrick Scott is the evidence. Yeah, he's he's he always brings his receipts and I love him for it. Yep, um, agreed. But yeah, I don't I don't like it either. Um, but here how here's how famous you are in the Stephen King community. I get comments about you that are not comments on your comment people bring you up there's one guy who said there's a guy named patrick who's always correcting people i'm like yeah so they don't look like fucking idiots what what the, what the hell is your problem um but patrick you are beloved around here brother yeah, straight. You, you are you you make my job so much easier i i do get frustrated when i see it so if it takes me a couple of days to heart your comment, it's because I'm pissed off at myself. <laughs> and I'm sitting back stewing, going, God damn it, why is he always going to be right? You know, okay, the one thing, the one thing that, like, that Patrick never did, though, is be like, you dumb fucks. You know, he never he never name right. called. Exactly he, my he point. never came in like the Kool-Aid man, like, listen <laughs> here, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. Exactly. He was always chill. And like, if people can't see that, then, oh, we got permission for you to send me the tattoo, I see. Yes. Yes. Excellent. That's what I was going to bring up next. Yes. Uh, Midnight Mass is legit the best Salem's Lot adaptation, in my opinion. It is so true, though. <laughs> totally it, right, it's, Jacob. It's funny because even watching that show is like a literary experience because you have long, long, luscious monologues yes. where you are you are getting you are getting that narrative in your head that you would normally be getting while reading, and that's where I think Flanagan nails Stephen King and everything that he does is he gives you that narrative feeling of reading a book. Absolutely. absolutely fantastic yes um let's see here we're gonna we we gotta go guys this has been so much fun mr doyle are you gonna make any more covers of songs uh so this must be in re- uh, in regards to the stand by me cover that i shared um mm-hmm. i i i don't have any plans to at this time what i am planning to do is upload all of the music i've made for the channel so far which is over a hundred tracks uh onto mm-hmm. Bandcamp. 
for people to just listen to and download for free. And then I have uh, my band Enormous Little Things has two albums on uh, Spotify. If you want to check those out, hang on, hang on. Yeah, pause just just for a second. Keep 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 that keep that keep that rolling. But I want to put down Enormous Little Things. Yep, yep. And then I have another band called Back Alley Dentistry. Uh, <laughs> which can be found on YouTube and uh, Bandcamp. That one's would, not on Spotify. But if you Google either of those, that's the only things that are going to come up. Okay, so this might be a little bit of a reach, but that's what I do. Um, back alley dentistry. I have a character in one of my novels called the Rest Stop Dentist. Yeah. That's pretty similar. <laughs> that's, that's, I'm telling you, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Anyways, so guys, this has been an absolute pleasure. I am going to let him tell you where all you can find him. Uh, I let him finish up talking about the bands if you need to. Um, and then we're going to take it. We're, we're going to take it to the house. Um, but no more questions. I I want to answer your questions, but we're definitely, I, I don't, don't want to say definitely. We, we're going to do this again, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, we're, absolutely. We're, we're I've had a blast. We're doing this again. Definitely. That's, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, can either continue on yep. with the band stuff or just tell everybody where they can find you. You can legitimately find me pretty much only on YouTube these days, um, a great undertaking. Um, I'm on Instagram. I don't actually use it. Uh, I have a Facebook page. I have never used it. I do not have Twitter. I do not have threads. I, I just don't have time to deal with any of that stuff. Uh, so just... Just find me on YouTube and, and throw me a sub and I'll and I'll and I'll give you a big thumbs up in the comments when you leave me a little something. But yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm I'm monetized now, kind of ish. I don't know. YouTube's I don't understand what's happening, but uh, they they like had me apply for the partner program and uh, I was approved. So we'll see what happens. But I don't know. I didn't really start it to make money. So I'm like not going to do the memberships or any of that shit. It's really. nice though. It's not the only reason I have memberships turned on on my channel. I have yeah. I think six people total. Yeah, yeah. And the only reason why is because people literally harassed me for like six months. <laughs> it's like turn on memberships so we can get, start a Patreon, do this, that, and the other. It's like I have a Patreon, but that's for my books, and I don't want to keep track of another damn thing. Yeah. So I turned on memberships. I don't do anything. As far as memberships are concerned, they don't get yeah. special emojis like or any of that stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just if they want to support me, they can. Cool. Um, if not, that's fine too. But cool, cool. Yeah. Anyway, so you heard him. You heard the man. Run over to his channel now. Sub if you haven't already. Hopefully you already have. Um, but this has been an absolute blast, man. We'll we'll get together afterward, and we will go and we will talk about when we want to do this. I'm thinking probably once a month. I don't know. It depends on, I, I don't have a schedule, but he does. So uh, we we'll definitely work around his schedule and we will have some themed episodes. This was a getting to know you session. Um, I knew it was going to go well. Um, yeah, <laughs> I said it before too. we even went live. I was like, yeah, this, this is going to be, it's going to be the easiest work I've ever done. Um, but anyways, and it's not even, it's not work. That's not what I was getting at, but it's uh, no, a good time. De yes, definitely. Um, thank you guys everybody for stopping in and listening to us just have fun and that's that's the most important thing I, I believe about this platform period is that we can get together and we can talk about the things that we like the things that we don't like and we can respectfully disagree when we do disagree but until next time all hail the chair thank you again for stopping by mr doyle anything else you want to say uh, thanks to everybody who joined us here, and I'll see you on the channel. Thanks, Chair. Bye-bye.